Hey, good evening. It's uh, Wednesday, November 8th, and welcome back to Everyday Talks 24-7. Nice to be able to enjoy the uh, sunset with you as it goes behind me here. We're looking tonight again, what I looked at last night, the first part, about the importance of our words. God intends our words, especially if you're parents, or even if you're talking to someone who's a friend, or a husband, or a wife. Our words are to be life-giving. We just can't turn our back on the importance of our words. They are so important. And that's what we need to read here in Proverbs chapter 4. And we see this theme throughout the scriptures. We see it in the words of Moses. We see it throughout the Proverbs. But notice here, my son, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their body. See how important this is. We're to speak words to one another, not of my origin, but of what are here from the Word of God, because that's where truth is. That's how we take hold of life that's truly life. So those are the verses 20 to 22 in Proverbs chapter 4. And then we looked at last night, 23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And that's the importance of the heart. Now these next verses are not often connected with what we speak in terms of the importance of our words, but they need to be, because they speak. If we're to have credibility, not just spouting off words, not just telling what people to do. That's wrong, you shouldn't do that. Stop that. Or that's the wrong thing to do. The God's word says don't do that. They may be true words, but they're unhelpful. As Ephesians 4 says, our words have to be spoken in such a way that they build up the person we're talking to. So sometimes we can say things that are accurate and true, but they're not helpful. Our words are to be life-giving. So notice what verses 25, 24 through 27 talk about the nature of life-giving words. Verse 24, right on target. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. That means if we're gonna be helping people, we need to stay away from speech of others that is perverse because that will that will damage us. First Corinthians 15:33 says that bad company corrupts good character. Well, that's exactly what's being talking about talked about here. If you listen to the perverse talk of others, and not necessarily bad language, but people that don't make God's word the center of their life if they focus on issues like anxiety without being able to trust in God first and somehow rely on our own strength, that's also perverse talk. It's unhelpful talk. Perverse just means it's not going in the upright good direction. So that's the first thing. We want to avoid talk from others around us, which is going to pull us away from the importance of giving life-giving speech and words to others. And then verses 25, 26, and 27 make that exact point. It's part of being out here on the farm. You get farm noises and uh, uh, machinery. But anyway, listen to what's being said. Look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. In other words, the way you live your life, who you talk to, the people that influence you, these all have an impact on these life-giving words that we're supposed to give. Because the challenge of dealing with people, as you know, is that it's a tough world. 
people are defensive. They're struggling. You want to be able to communicate in such a way that you are being faithful. We don't need outside influences that's pulling pull us away from the Word of God. I don't care if it's an abundance of uh, videos and TV shows and uh, streaming things that you do, or it's poor friends that you have, or things you indulge in that you shouldn't be, that are kind of okay but not. If they're not building us up, if it's not glorifying to God, not in a churchy sense, but in a life sense, then our words are not going to be life-giving. <clears throat> They're just as likely to be seen as self-serving. See, if we're going to be involved in the practice of giving words that are life, we have got to be totally all in. We just can't flip a switch and say, no, I'm going to give you life-giving words. Because we have no credibility at all if we do that. Zero. But if we are dialed in to the Word of God, if we catch the significance that my words, not the words that I have, but the words that I speak representing God, can give life to people, are meant to give life to people. People are hurting. And what they need is truth, not opinions, not shortness, not arrogance, not sarcasm, not I told you so, but words that are spoken from the heart, that are life-giving. Words that are from a heart that knows what it means to mess up and know the grace and forgiveness of God. Not words from someone who is self-righteous and has it all together, but words that are someone who is in the trenches knows what it means to trust God. And then we want to give that heart one data, that heart one information, that heart one, heart one, one truth to the people we talk to. That's what God is calling us to. Again, listen carefully to my words for they bring life to those who find them and healing to the whole body. That's such a beautiful, beautiful promise. That's where our hope is. Life-giving words. Let's bring our life into line so that we are really prepared to give words that are life-giving and not just on the spur of the moment but we're ready to give those words because you'll never know when someone will need them. But God knows. So let's follow this direction here in Proverbs chapter 4, 20 to 27, and give our life, give our hearts to speaking words that give life. And that's the thought for this night. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow on a different topic. Uh, if you have any questions, Q&A Friday's coming up. Again, thank you for the honor and privilege to be able to talk to you each day. Again, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.